CataractCoach.com, Cataract Quiz. How do you proceed safely? The patient had a lens puncture from an intervitreal injection. Check this out. So here you go, right there. There's a puncture pre-existing of the lens capsule, and now you have to do the cataract surgery. What are you going to do? Now, this is going to be a tough case here. We've featured this topic before on Cataract Coach. If you haven't reviewed those, go to cataractcoach.com, the website, and look it up. I promise you'll learn a lot. Now, here comes some viscoids going inside the eye. Let's get the main incision made. So using the, the camera to hold the eye, and there's a good incision. Kind of a limbal incision there. And let's get a rexus done. Now, the rexus is so important. Why do you need a 5-millimeter rexus? Well, you may be putting in a sulcus IOL because the posterior capsule, as you know, has already been penetrated by that individual injection. So a good 5-millimeter centered round capsule rexus is so important. It really is. Take your time. Make it pretty. Now, what do you want to do for the lens removal? Yeah, I guess you want to do some hydrodissection, but... Don't be too aggressive here, otherwise you'll split the capsule wide open, and that nucleus will sit very happily on the macula. And you don't want that. So nice and easy here. Let's do some hydrodissection, little gentle aliquot, small amounts. Can you get this lens up? I want this lens out of the capsule bag, to be frank with you. Let's see what the surgeon's going to do here. We've obviously sped the video up. So now let's see what's going to happen here. Going with a blunt tip chopper. Groove down the middle. A groove down the middle is a reasonable approach. We'll stop and chop technique here. Split it in half and then bring each half up out of the bag. Don't work in the bag so much. Let's see what we're going to do next. Okay, divide and conquer even kind of like it. Quadrants. All right. Listen, whatever makes you happy, whatever works in your hands. Let's just get this lens out of the eye. I want this nucleus out, 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 out of the capsule bag. Bring it up to the level of the iris. Even bring in the AC if you want to. But I don't want this thing to fall back in the vitreous cavity. AC is good. VC is bad. A AC means anterior chamber. VC means vitreous cavity. You don't want the length of the vitreous cavity. So now here we go. You got an epinuclear shell. Can you get that whole shell up? Nice and easy. Kind of just like tease that shell up. You know what? I'm going to have a video coming up about epinuclear shells. Because I think that's a good topic. So just nice and easy. Get that shell up if you can. And then we can examine the bag. Now, when you get that shell out of the eye, don't just pull the probe out of the eye. Because who knows what's cooking with that posterior capsule now, right? Intervitreal injections are so common now. In the USA, there are many times more intervitreal injections done per year than cataracts per year. So intervitreal injections are now the number one procedure in all of ophthalmology in the USA. And I'm betting that's the case also in a lot of other countries and regions around the world. Now, surgeon's going in here with a cannula and going to bring up that hopefully that there's the epinuclear shell. Get this thing out. Bring this baby up. I like the viscoelastic you said. That's very smart. I like that a lot. Bring that, yeah, bring that epinuclear shell up out of the bag. Get it up to the iris plane or in the AC. Now put the faker probe in the eye. Just wolf that thing right down. Here we go, nice and easy. Let's see, vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. Here, don't give any fake of power, just vacuum. Because if you give the fake of power, it'll break off that piece. And you kind of want this whole shell to stay intact and be one big shell that you can just kind of wolf down. Now, more viscoelastic going inside the eye. Viscoelastic is a great barrier. Oh, look at that break. There's your break in the posterior capsule, my friends. That's a significant break. Let's get the rest of that lens material out of the eye before it goes into the vitreous cavity. Now, another pair of knees, I like the idea. That's a good move. By manual IA, or is it, oh, that's a vitrector, actually. Right hand has the infusion, left hand has the vitrector, which you can use the vitrector in IA mode to take out the cortex. And then you can also use that same vitrector, obviously, to do vitrectomy. So make sure you understand your settings there. You can actually have the vitrectomy system plugged into the machine and then hit IA on the console, on the settings, and it'll act like an irrigation aspiration by manual's device. It won't act like a vitrector. And then when you hit the vitrectomy mode on the machine, then it'll engage the cutter. And then, of course, you have to know the difference between IA cut versus anterior vitrectomy. So position one on all these is infusion. Is position two aspiration, which is IA cut, because then position three is cut? Or is it anterior vitrectomy, where position one is infusion, two is the cutter? And then three is the aspiration. So you got to understand your machine and know which one's which. 
Uh, some machines out there, you can actually just turn the, the cutter on and off with your foot pedal. Other ones, you have to just change the setting on the machine. It's The onus is on you, young doctor or old doctor or whoever you are, to know how your machine is and get it set up appropriately to do a good job here. Now, cleaning up that cortex pretty nicely. There's that break in the capsule. The rest of the back looks pretty good, though. Now, what are you going to do here for a lens? Think about it. Do you want to put the lens in the bag? With that break there? Or do you want to do a sulcus lens? Like, for me here, I'm just thinking three-piece IOL, haptics and the sulcus, optic capture. There's more viscoelastic, always a good move. I like the viscoelastic before exiting the eye. Smart move there. Switching hands, good, good, good. Get that cortex out. I just don't want that cortex in the eye. Because if you just do nothing, nothing is falling back in the vitreous cavity. I promise you that. And it'll become a hot mess. So cleaning that cortex up, nicely done. A little bit of cutter going in there in the break. Now, if you hear your machine go ding, 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 that's the sign of occlusion. That's the sound of occlusion. So you need to engage the cutter like the surgeon is doing here in the area of capsule breakage because there's obviously just prolapse. Now, triamcinolone is your friend here. A little bit of preserve-free triamcinolone will stain and let you know what the vitreous is and where it is, etc. More viscoelastic, always a good sign. A little bit of cortex that's remaining. Another para, I like it. Great idea to give yourself that access to come across here and now use the cutter on IA mode. Aspirate that cortex, get it out of the eye. Yep, beautiful. I like it. An extra paracinesis saves the day. Good job, beautiful brilliant work here i love it now let's clean up the cortex and by the way you got to tell the referring doctor hey why you put a needle in the lens capsule why you take like a week off my life here and then you go to cataractcoach.com the teaching website and you learn so much because so much free material and it's all free plus the cataract coach podcast top podcast all about ophthalmology and you will learn so much that will make you far more successful in your career now back to our case here here we go Viscoelastic filling up the bag, and it looks pretty good. All the cortex is out. Beautiful job here, doctor. Very nicely done. And then, what are we going to do for a lens here? You know, enlarging the incision. I bet you that means 3P's lens. 3P's lens coming in now. I put the haptics and sulcus and the optic capture behind the rexus. And for, you know what? I, this is a great technique, actually. Injecting the entire lens on the iris first. Well, why is it on top of the iris? Don't worry, it's not going to stay there. It's just so you know you can gently dial this thing in exactly in the sulcus. So take your time here. Dial this thing right, that haptic right in the sulcus. There it is. Rotate it around. Get the other haptic right in the sulcus. Beautifully done. Once it's done, then you can optic capture it. So again, here's why sometimes you do want to inject the eye oil on top of the iris. It makes life much easier for you. Why suffer? And then once you get that optic capture, that's a beautifully stable eye. That lens is going nowhere. This is fantastic. Now, the end of the case here, keep in mind, you have a higher risk of macular edema. You got a higher risk of retinal attachment. You got a higher risk of endophthalmitis. So a patient like this, you know what this deserves? It definitely deserves some intracameral antibiotics, like some preserver-free moxifloxacin or cefuroxime, whatever you like to do. But also, watch the patient in the post-op period. Make sure nothing else happens. And at the end here, sealing up the incisions. Hydrate that up. If there's any leaf in the incisions, okay to put a 10 nylon. That's no big deal. And then to the end here, that looks pretty good. Now, if you're sticking with me to the end here, we're already coming on the nine-minute mark. And mostly, when I watch the decay rate of cataract coach videos, especially on YouTube, you know, very few watch to the nine-minute mark. So if you're listening to my voice here at the nine-minute mark, you deserve a special prize. I like it. Thank you for doing that because we're learning together here. I was reluctant to make this video at ultra high speed because then you'd miss out on so much good stuff. So here at the very end, again, checking, making sure there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber. There isn't. Pupil came down nice with my call. That's important. If the pupil's not peaked at all, it looks great. Again, triamcinolone is your friend here. I'd put some triamcinolone in the eye. I know there's no vitreous. Just a just, you know, prove to me there's none. Plus, also, it's inflammation control. It'll quiet down the eye in the post-op period. And then if that incision even has a tiny bit of leak, just put a suture in. A 10 on nylon is nothing. Easy to do. But you know what? We'll just check and see make sure it all looks good. So beautiful case here. Fantastic job recovering from that tough situation. Again, podcast every single week, everywhere you find podcast services. And I promise it will make you an actual better ophthalmologist.